Hey there, everyone. Um, 30 seconds this time for me to get this rocking. It takes a while to get the streaming platform actually rocking. But hey, here we are today. It is Wednesday, January 3rd. Um, and hey, the beauty of being able to work from home is that even when you're running a terrible fever and you look like crap, which I currently do right now, um, you can still have great conversations with wonderful people. And today I wanted to talk to you about the secrets to a 529. And in particular, there's a lot of cool things about a 529. You know, for one, um, a lot of people may not be using it. If they if they aren't, maybe they should. But with that being said, um, you know, a 529 in the top line can be used for K through 12 expenses, not just for higher education like college. Uh, it can help you uh, not just for tuition, but also for laptops and internet access and even apprenticeship programs. Uh, a 529, even in, in some particular states, could actually allow for you to have tax credits and deductions and everything like that for you to benefit from by leveraging a 529 for your kids. Now, all those things are wonderful things, but um, here's why you may not actually want to use a 529. And, and so with that, I'd like to introduce a good friend of mine. He's been here before, and we've just been rocking uh, with a lot of... Um, conversation the past couple of weeks here. Uh, Mr. Kevin McGinnis, who is the you know former bull rider, McDonald's guy, guy's taken a few companies public. He, he seems to have a, a thing or two, um, at, you know, helping serve this world. So Kevin, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Sorry you're under the weather. And it, it is amazing that we actually, in many cases, not everyone obviously, but many cases get to work from wherever we want to, whether that's on a beach or from home. Um, this this new era that we're in of being able to remotely work for a lot of people um, dramatically has changed our business. Mm -hmm. Just be, the fact that my the, the, the team that I built, I have over a thousand licensed agents around the country, and they literally can be anywhere and serving others and helping others from any remote location as long as they're able to connect to the Internet. So that is a huge blessing. For some people, it's not. For some people, that, that doesn't work out okay. But I'm glad you're able to actually uh, work from a space where you're comfortable. Absolutely. Yeah. My dog's hanging out in here. He's monitoring me. He's like my nurse. Um, so, you know, he's, so long as he's not waking up the sick kid, that's all I really care about. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's, let's get rocking here, Kevin. So, you know, I've got, I've got a kid myself. I know you have kids yourself. Um, I was once a kid as well. Um, and you know, the 529 has been a popular topic of conversation, similar to the 401ks were a popular topic of conversation. And we're all led to believe that the 529 is so great because I already highlighted a lot of benefits. Like I, I don't want to detract from putting money away into a 529 is a step in the right direction, certainly. Correct. Um, so if you're already doing that, kudos to you. You are, you are more advanced than the majority of people out there. But yeah. I also want to try and help people understand and maybe look at it for, through a different lens is maybe why the 529 is not the best option for us. Well, let's start with a few questions. And because and, at the end of the day, it's always compared to what? Anything you're doing, it, it's compared to what? If I'm going to do something, if I, yay, I'm doing something. But if, if I'm running east looking for a sunset, I'm not going to get there. So there's at least I'm doing something. Right? I'm trying to find that sunset, but I'm going the wrong direction. So yeah. it, always whenever we're looking at whether or not we should make a change, it comes down to is what I'm doing getting me closer to my goals or my objectives? Because here we are at the beginning of the year, everyone's setting their goals and their New Year's resolutions. Well, you've talked about Tony Robbins before. Tony Robbins talks about the ultimate success formula. Have an yeah. outcome, start taking massive action towards mm -hmm. that outcome, but then have some sensory acuity. Notice whether or not what you're doing is moving you as quickly as you'd like towards that actual objective. And if not, then make an adjustment. So you don't change the goal. The goal stays the same. The outcome stays the same. But how you get there, you can have a hundred different paths to get. Just like with your GPS on your car, you put in the directions to go to Times Square, but there's a roadblock. Something happens, bridges out. It gives you a detour and it shows you a faster path, an alternate route that's better than the one you were on to get there. But it's compared to what is the path I'm on going to get me there in the time frame that I want. So let's let's just ask a few questions about the 529 plan. Yep. Let's say my kids are mathletes or athletes and they get okay. scholarships and I've been saving money, saving money, saving money in the 529 plan. And now they have these scholarships so they don't need that money for the, the college tuition. Can I use that money to buy them a car to go off to college? Am I allowed to use that money to buy a car? No, that one, that one wouldn't fit under there. Correct. <laughs> um, what about if I wanted to put a down payment on a house for them? 
Can I take that money out of the 529 and, and put a down payment on a house? Can I, can I pay for helping them start a business? If I wanted them to actually have a business that gave them an asset that's providing them an income, can I take money out of the 529 and, and do that? How about they get out of college? They want to get married. Can I take that money and use it? For, if, if I don't use it for education or a couple of those specific things that you were earmarking earlier, mm -hmm. if I don't use it for that, it reverts back like a 401k. And for mom and dad, I can't touch it until 59 and a half. And if they touch it, there's penalties for actually accessing that money early. But what about market risk? If the market tanks, mm -hmm. let's say you're, you're saving, saving, saving. The, the child didn't have the scholarships, but they're getting ready to, to go to college and you're ready to use that. But all of a sudden the market takes a 10, 20, 30 percent drop in the market. And that money you thought you had to be able to send them off to school is now evaporated. Yeah. So what if there's a way we could actually set the same money aside but get some guarantees on the money to where if it goes up, the market goes up, market goes down, we get the gains, but we don't take the losses. Mm -hmm. But also, what if uh, I had the account that, yes, it was there for education, but if little Timmy gets the scholarships, then you could use it for whatever else you want. You could use yeah. it to pay for the, the car, the, the down payment on the house, the wedding, the starting a business, anything else you want to. Or if little Timmy acts a fool, <laughs> and decides he's not going to go to school. He's not going to follow direction. He's going to just go off and do his own thing. Mom and dad go to Tahiti for crying out loud. <laughs> you, have, you have access to money. You are the owner of that. Yes, you're earmarking it for your child's education, but college education isn't necessarily right for every child. Yeah. There, there's obviously certain career paths where it's absolutely necessary, it's absolutely required. But I think we can all agree there's times when it actually isn't the best thing. And, yep. and there's just tons of success stories, even of people who started going to college, but then they chose to leave college to go start a business and do something else. Yep. And many, many success stories from that. Um, or you have people who just get into a situation where the money would be better used for that family yeah. for something else. And um, for me personally, I just in my own personal life, I my dad passed away when I was 16. And after and he had no life insurance in place, no no money set aside. He he was unhealthy near the end, so a lot of doctor bills and expenses wiped out my parents' finances. So when he passed away, we literally had nothing. My mom and I I, I left school in the tenth grade, started working three jobs trying to make ends meet, and we ended up losing everything. Um, ended up living in a camper shell in the back of a truck for an extended period of time. So I don't, I don't come from money. I come from a complete lack of yeah. money. Yeah. And if we'd have had a 529 plan set aside at that point, there was, there was no me going off to college at that point. There was there, there yeah. literally with that life situation happening. But if we'd have had that a pile of money that was set aside, that could have been used for other things that would have made a huge difference at that point. So yeah. anyhow, that, let us talk about some, there, there are some other alternatives that a person who wants to put away money for their child and yet also have some flexibility on that. Mm -hmm. Let, let's take a look at that. So I'm going to share my screen out here. Yeah. And while you're trying to share the screen, you know, as I think about it, there's that guy from Facebook, that guy from Apple, the guy from Microsoft, uh, Gates yeah, guys. and jobs that they, they all dropped out of college. So, <laughs> um, it, it, it makes me believe that it's okay. Um, so let's yeah. get there's definitely times where it would make sense and there's times where it wouldn't make sense. But, it, but what about just having the flexibility? What about having the option? Mm -hmm. So you should see a slide that says financial IQ. Is that showing up on your side? Yep. Yep. And I'm just okay. adding my face uh, into the conversation and then I'm going to slide us down there so people can actually see the slide for the most part. So here's just an example of um, what, what, when you look at the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers, billionaires with a B. Right back when a billion dollars was way more, right? but uh, uh, the, today the Rockefeller family is worth an estimated eleven billion dollars. Still to this day, makes one of the richest families in the world. Yeah. But the Vanderbilts, which I live here in Nashville, we have Vanderbilt University, we have Vanderbilt Hospital, right? Commodores, all that. So when the Commodore passed away, right? I'm sorry, he when he when he passed his money on, he passed all his money to one son. No guidance, no structure. Yeah. And within a few short years, his children, the Commodore's grandkids, had literally spent almost all of that money. There, there's a book called The Fortune's Children, The Fall of the House of Vanderbilt. <clears throat> and within 30 years after the Commodore's death, the, 
the, the family that was, there, there wasn't a single person in the family that was among the richest people in the U.S. Mm-hmm. When 120 of the, fam- the Commodore's descendants gathered at Vanderbilt University in 73 for a family reunion, there wasn't a millionaire among them. Yeah. So what was the difference between the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers? Well, the Rockefellers, every time a child was born, their Rockefellers were famous for structuring what are called family offices and family banks. They, they would yeah. structure these accounts that generationally would create wealth for the family. Mm-hmm. And so every time a child was born, they would put money into this family banking concept that you and I have shared some conversations with in some of our other talks. And when they would put that money in there, they would earmark it for that child. Yeah. Now, you get to still be the owner on the account, though. Like I said, if a little Timmy acts a fool, you're still the owner of the account, yep. but you're earmarking it for, for that child. And by structuring these family bank structures, no one child could wipe out the family's fortune. Sure. Well, Kevin, what if our family doesn't have a fortune? Well, let's start creating a fortune to generationally create generational wealth. Yeah. And let's take a look at what one of these structures actually looks like. And we call it the million dollar baby plan. Uh, it, it's an alternative to anything else you would set aside the money for the child for. But okay. let's just look at some, a simple number, hundred bucks, hundred bucks a month going away. That Can you really change someone's financial future? Can you change your family's name, right? Can you make your family's name stand out by just setting aside a hundred dollars yeah. a month? Let's find out. Let's kind of run the numbers on it. So let's say, you start putting away that hundred dollars a month and, and we talk to the family because what do we do as, as middle America, median income families, um, we spend so much money on toys where the kid, when they're so young, they play more with the box than they do the toy that came in the box, right? If you watch them on Christmas morning, That's they're putting true. the box on their head, they're climbing it, they're making forts out of the boxes. They're not even playing with the toys. So rather than spending all the money on the high dollar toys, let's go ahead and buy the toys at Dollar General or something, right? Save a little bit of money there. And then mm-hmm. let's take that money we're saving and put, Guys, you get what I'm saying, right? Find find a way to redirect some dollars. But yeah. even for a hundred dollars, by the time that child's 18, there's about forty, fifty thousand dollars that's saved up in that account. What if we then loaned money to ourselves out of that account and we were able to pay for the down payment on the car, braces, senior trip, whatever, in this case, just six thousand dollars coming out. But then the the child is gonna go off to college. And in in one of the things we'd recommend is leveraging student loans. And I know as soon as I say that, someone watching this is panicking right now. (laughs) They're like, student loans are the devil. What are you talking about? I've got $200,000 of student loan debt. I never want my kids to have to go through that. Breathe for a second, breathe. Let's finish the thought before you just click off. Stay with me for just a second here and let's walk through the right way to leverage a student loan. So instead of taking this money that we've been saving, and paying for a child's education, taking the money, the goose that's earning interest, that goose is laying golden eggs, instead of giving the goose to the school, what if we keep feeding the goose? What if we keep fattening the goose while the child is going to school for free, right? While we're not having to make any kind of student loan payments, if they're not making any student loan payments, we keep fattening this goose. So they go to student, they go to, they go get the education and normally they come out with this student loan debt burden, this weight on their shoulders. Mm-hmm. No, we're going to have a goose that's now grown up and now it has enough interest it's earning. It's laying enough golden eggs where you can let the interest alone that it's generating pay the student loan payment. So the child doesn't have a student loan debt burden. The family doesn't have a student loan debt burden. And the family didn't cash out their 401k to pay because so many times people cash out their 401ks to pay for a child's education. Yeah. They make student loans. They don't make retirement loans. So you need that money later. So cashing that out and using it now and not having it later, right? That, that's not the right plan either. Let's make sure we have an asset that's generating income. Let that income pay the student loan payment. Eventually that student loan payment is gone and you still have the goose that's laying golden eggs. And now those golden eggs are continuing to pile up. By the time that child reaches age 65, they're a tax free millionaire in one of these indexed accounts we've been talking about where you get high returns Mm -hmm. and no risk. If the market crashes 20, 30, 40%, you don't lose a dime. You have all the money and all the growth. So you're able to get the gains and not take the losses. But let's say they're a tax-free millionaire. They've got a million dollars. Let's say it's making 10% and they're taking 10%. Yep. 
that means they're just living off the interest. That, that goose is laying 10% golden egg. So if it's yep. making 10% and you're taking 10%, you're not touching the nest egg. You're just living off the interest. Yep. Well, that's $100,000 a year for the next 20 years. Let's say they live another 20, 30, 40 years. Let's using 20 in this example. That's yep. $2 million that they get to take out of that account through retirement. Eventually, they're going to pass away. What happens to the money in their account? That goose passes on to the next generation yep. outside of probate and income tax free. So 1.4 million passes on. When you add it all up, the total amount of money that went into that account over the child's lifetime was $147,000. Hmm. But the amount of money you got to take out, $3.5 million out of that account, high returns, no risk, no taxes, use it for school, use it for anything you want. Yeah. literally don't get the handcuffs the 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 529 is fine for the tax benefits but you get so many handcuffs that go along with those tax benefits why not get an account that has the exact same tax benefits it grows tax free and you take it out tax free but it has all these other benefits yeah. and none of the handcuffs yeah that that makes a lot of sense i mean the flexibility there that you're touching on um everybody likes flexibility that's the number one thing out there um so um, how, how, how easy is this in to set up a, oh, a replacement to the 529 or what else should we be thinking about here from a question standpoint? Well, certainly the, there, there are, because there is a wrapper of protection. Now here's another benefit that comes with this. When you get an indexed account, these IULs, these indexed life insurance accounts, they have a wrapper of life insurance. Okay. Over a hundred years ago, the government said that life insurance, and now again, some people are going to panic when they hear life insurance. Yeah. That is, insurance is just a guarantee. People say, well, how can you get guarantees on your money? Think about it. If you have insurance on your phone and you break your phone, you are guaranteed to be given a new phone. Yep. If you have insurance on your car and you wreck your car, you're guaranteed to be given a new car. It, insurance is just a guarantee. You're buying a guarantee. It, it's almost like if you get that, that extended warranty on your car for the transmission, yeah. you almost hope that your transmission goes out at some point because you've been paying for that extended warranty, that guarantee on your war your transmission. Um, and if you if a transmission doesn't go out, then you're like, ah, oh, I wasted all that money. Well, guess what? At some point, we're all going to pass away. So having a wrapper of life insurance just is a guarantee that, A, our money will never lose money. Money will only go up, never go down. Yeah. And eventually, we are going to pass away. So that's an asset that's going to pass on to our families. But the, the fact that, that wrapper gives us those tax advantages that any money, the government said that life insurance is a benefit to the government because if someone passes away, they won't have their handout for welfare or food stamps. So in 1913, yeah. the government said that any dollars that go inside a wrapper of insurance will grow tax free and you can take it out tax free. Mm -hmm. And about 30 years ago, they changed the rules where instead of the life insurance company making all the high rates of return, now the client gets to make the high rates of return. Yeah. So this ability for someone to get high returns with no risk, phenomenal. Oh, but there is this benefit of this wrapper of life insurance. It's never cheaper to buy life insurance than today, meaning the younger you are, the lower yeah. the cost is on it. Yeah. And obviously on kids, it's pennies on the dollar yeah. to have a protection, which they're going to need someday. Eventually they're going to probably have a family, get married, kids. They're going to have an insurable need that says, hey, if something happens to me, I want to make sure my family is taken care of. Um, if not, they still could give it to a donation. They could uh, have that beneficiary be a charity, something else that's important to them as they get older. But that wrapper of protection gives them the guarantees on the money and it gives them the tax advantages on it. So that is one of the questions we have to ask, though, is what if the child is uninsurable? Because unfortunately, some children are born uninsurable. They have some health yeah. situation that causes them to not be able to be insured. But the odds of being able to insure a child versus every day we get older, the odds of something happening to us that cause us to be uninsurable or cause our insurance rates to be higher, it's if a person is insurable, though, it'll always be less expensive yeah. as a child than as they get older. And the mm -hmm. one argument that some people say, well, but, but yeah, but if they get it when they're older, they're going to pay for it for the rest of their life. Because it's so much less expensive, it is way cheaper to have it and have it younger and have it for the rest of your life than to wait till you're older and only have it for 10 or 20 years. The cost is so much higher when you're older, even though you're only going to be paying into it for 10 years or so before you pass away than if you had it your whole life at the pennies on the dollar. Yeah. And, and so a quick question for you here, Kevin. Um, 
when I'm thinking about like the IE weld, then replacing that 529 for a kid, mm -hmm. like you said, it's pennies on the dollar, but this kid is going to turn into an adult and will have their own yep. family. Yep. I, I know you have to have some form of insurance in place to hit the federal requirements of being defined as insurance, which then allows for you to, you know, basically have those yep. guarantees versus a traditional investment account. Um, right. My question is, let's just say the coverage right now is $100,000 for a baby or whatever it might be. Right. Now we know in the future, once you have a, a family and you look at your debt income margin and expenses or educational things that you want to account for, mm -hmm. that that might grow to like $2 million. So right. will this baby 30 years later be able to take that $100,000 policy up to $2 million policy without having to go through any new financial requirements? They will not. They're, 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 there's gonna, they're not only financial, but health requirements. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, they will have to look at getting qualified for extra coverage later on. But let's say it's, and, and normally, the hundred, I would normally have at least $250,000 on the child. Yeah. You can do up to half of what a parent has. So if a parent has a million dollars of coverage, you can do up to $500,000 okay. of coverage for most carriers. That's kind of a, a, a general rule of yeah. thumb on that. Um, so with that in mind, I would highly recommend, because again, it's so inexpensive, have the bigger bucket available for that child so they have coverage later on. And then and once, they're, once they reach an, an age where there's another insurability, they, they get a job, they, they buy their first house, and there's reasons why they would want to have some extra coverage, then as soon as possible, add just term insurance as excess, but term insurance is convertible. You can buy convertible term that mm -hmm. can be converted into IULs later on and again, having yourself qualified for it as young as possible, having a, even just a 10 year term when someone's 20 years old, having a 10 year term policy that's convertible to an IUL, super inexpensive, but as they get married or as they have other assets, as they have things they'd wanna protect, as they have a business or something and they wanna actually have the living benefits that come along with insurance, yeah. meaning that wrapper of insurance, let's say they, have a, they get another million dollar coverage at, at 25 or 30 years old, well, that million dollars of coverage, if something happens to them, heart attack, stroke, cancer, diabetes, car wreck, something that puts them on bed rest, yeah. they can, they're not supposed to do two of six activities of daily living, things like feeding yourself, bathing yourself, transporting yourself. They can take up to 90% of that wrapper of insurance while they're still alive. So yeah. it's a phenomenal income replacement program, yeah. which especially if someone's a business owner or they're the primary breadwinner of a family, what if something happens and they can't bring home the bacon? Yeah. They may have medical insurance that covers their medical bills, but how do you pay your house payment? How do you pay your car payment? 80% of all bankruptcies in this country happen because of medical issues. Not that they didn't have medical insurance. They didn't have a way to produce an income. So they yeah. had to file bankruptcy because of their medical situation. So yeah. having an income replacement strategy is just another thing that having that in place sooner and then being able to convert that over to an IUL during that 10 year, 20 year term, you can convert it. And now you have another bucket to store even more cash in, but you have that additional protection in place at that point. Hmm. So yes, a person would have to qualify for that extra amount later on, but the younger they do that, the better. So in a way, if parents want to set them up for the most success, is there a few things they could do of one? Yeah. Say I have a million dollar policy on myself. Then I actually put a $500,000 policy on my kid first kind of that minimum of 250. Right. That's one thing, but also could I set that, that death benefit uh, to be increasing each year? So 30 years down the road, that 500,000 is now 1.2 or whatever it might have been increased to anyways. Is that the other way I could do that so that they don't have to have a new qualify? So when you, when people use the word increasing, there, there's some misunderstanding in the industry about how things actually are structured. So there's two basic ways to set up any kind of permanent coverage. So permanent coverage versus term. There, there's really only two. You yep. have term insurance, which is a yep. 10 year, 20 year, 30 year term. And then you have different flavors of permanent insurance. Permanent insurance just means it's going to be there for your, your lifetime. Now, permanent, many people say, oh, that's whole life. No, whole life is a specific type of permanent insurance where you pretty much have to pay a premium for your whole life. You got to keep paying that premium no matter what. Yep. In an IUL, some of the things we've talked about in some of the other conversations we've had, within about five or six years, there can be enough money in that account where you never have to put any more money in. It's going to keep itself alive. Yep. You're going to have coverage for the rest of your life, but you're not going to have to pay money in for your whole life. So those are two completely different types of permanent coverage. So in that permanent coverage, though, there are level policies and then there's increasing policies. 
an, a rule of thumb, an easy way to think of it. This isn't how it actually works, but a, a simple way to remember it. If I'm going to be putting in a level amount, let's say I'm just, I'm, I've reached a point in my life, I'm not planning on getting raises or promotions, and I just want to put away $500 a month. And that's all I really ever want to do. I'm not planning yeah. on getting raises or promotions and putting more in later on. If I'm going to put in a level amount of money, then a level policy is a, a kind of a good way to go for most people. Mm -hmm. If I want to be increasing money over time, if I want more cash inside this account, if I'm going to use this as a family banking structure, if I'm going to use yep. this to be doing loans out, the more I use the money, the better that money is going to grow because mm -hmm. I'm paying interest to myself, not to credit cards and car companies. Well, if I'm going to be increasing money into it, then I want an increasing policy. And all that really means is the amount of insurance, let's say it's a million dollars of coverage, your cash is increasing the total death benefit as the cash grows on top of that 500,000 of coverage. So meaning I've got 500,000 coverage. If I pass away tomorrow, 500,000 goes to my family, or let's, I'm sorry, a million dollars. If I got a million dollar policy yeah. and I pass away, a million dollars goes to my family. But as soon as I've got $100,000 in my account, well, then if I pass away, a million dollars of life insurance plus the 100,000 of cash or a dollar of cash or 200,000 of yeah. cash, the extra cash goes on so that cash and life insurance amount get converted to something called death benefit. So your face amount of life insurance, million dollars, plus any cash, those two things combine when we pass away to something called death benefit. And there's a lot of confusion where some companies try and tell you that death benefit and face amount are the same thing. And they'll say, oh, when you die, you only get the life insurance. You don't get the cash as well because they confuse death benefit and face amount as being interchangeable. They're not. Face amount is the amount of coverage you're buying. The death benefit is face amount plus cash convert to death benefits, which passes outside of probate and income tax free to your family. So in that case, yeah, the more cash a person's putting in, their death benefit is getting bigger and bigger to where they have that million dollars of coverage plus a million, two million, three million dollars of cash on top of that as it would all pass on outside of probate and income tax free to the family. That's a really big point that you just made there. It's not or, it's and. Mm. And I, I think that's a, a lot of people do confuse that. Hell, I confuse that no. the first couple times I looked at it. Not, not, only, not only people, people in the industry tell people that. They literally mislead them. And it's not, you could have a best friend who is in the insurance business. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> They're licensed. They've been through training. The problem is the company they represent, the trainers from that company have told them Oh yeah, you only get either or. So they, you could put your best friend on a lie detector. They believe what they're telling you. They look you in the eye, they look you dead center and they believe that you only get either or because that's what they've been taught. And they've been shown examples of old policies because back in the day, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there were policies that that's how those policies worked. You only got either or. But just like your cell phone has changed, we've talked about that. You know, you no longer have a hinge on your cell phone. Technology has changed your cell phone. Yep. The industry has changed and these products have advanced dramatically to be the tools that they are today for financial future, for your financial future. And unfortunately, your best friend could be put on a lie detector. They believe what they're, but have you ever believed something and found out later you were wrong? Have you ever had that experience? That's yeah. always a fun one with your spouse, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, so unfortunately, they're being taught something and shame on the trainers of those companies because in many cases those trainers know the difference but they're still training old outdated trainings to yeah. people that are brand new in the industry that don't know any better who are then repeating this misinformation yeah. so the reality is no that is i don't i my i believe there's not even any in existence there may still be a company somewhere offering a product like that that's an either or i'm not aware of any but if that, if that's true, that's certainly something I would never recommend to a client. I doubt that they would have a high credit rating if they're still offering yeah. something like that. That just yeah. sounds very <laughs> backward and scammy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, exactly. Wow. Um, okay. So is there anything else I should be thinking about from a 529? Because I mean, so my major takeaways here is like, yes, the 529 does offer a lot of great features like yeah. covering not just college, but also K through 12, the internet, um, apprenticeship laptops, all that fun stuff. But at the same time, like you've hit on. They well, you said all that fun stuff. stuff. Yeah. Only that fun stuff. That's it. Only that Would fun you, stuff. <laughs> only that fun stuff. What about everything else? And that, those are great. And the, ta the ta so the, t the biggest reason people do is the tax benefits for those things. So they're going to be able to grow money tax free and take it out tax free for this very specific finite group of, 
I'm about to give you an old reference. No, I think maybe three people watching this will pick it up, but I'm still going to throw it out there. there. There's a movie by Steve Martin called The Jerk. And The yep. Jerk um, is an old movie, but he, he gets a job at the carnival as a weight guesser. And hmm. these people keep coming up and, and as, he, as he, they're saying, well, what can I win? He's like, well, it, 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 if you win the first time, then it's, it's of all these prizes, it's, it's everything below this line and above this line and between this eraser and, between, <laughs> and he narrows it down. There's this little tiny bit and he's, he's doing terrible. And, and the, the guy who, uh, who, who is running the carnival comes over and Steve Martin's basically crying like, I'm, I'm terrible at this. I've had 20 people come up. I haven't guessed their rate, weight right once. Yeah. And the guy's like, dude. He says, we charge them a dollar for you to guess their weight. If they win a prize, it's a 10 cent prize they're winning. Yeah. So every time you guess their weight wrong, we're making 90 cents. Yeah. And Steve Martin's like, oh, it's a numbers game. And he throws his cue cards away. And he's like, step right. <laughs> right? And, and it, you know, he, it, he was excited about now taking advantage of people. And yeah. it's just, but, the, but the hilariousness of that, oh, all you get is this little benefit. And isn't that what they do? They, they have the big prizes at the carnival, but when you actually win, they give you the little one. Oh, you have to win three more times to trade up your prize and throw out your arm and yeah. all that kind of stuff. I don't like carnival games like that. I don't like scammy things, right? Yeah. I don't like it when there's limited benefits, but it's sold as, hey, this is an amazing thing. Why have the limits? Why have the handcuffs? Let's get rid of the handcuffs yeah. and be able to have the use of that money for anything, but still have the main benefit we wanted, which is grow tax free and take it out tax free. But let's add those guarantees on as well so we don't lose the money on the way. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. I kind of want to watch this movie. So uh, maybe I'll have to, have to <laughs> tune in for it. Um, but wow. Okay. So, I mean, th this has been really, really helpful. I, and I'm. I'm happy to say that I won't be doing a 529 then for my kid. I'll, uh, I'll use the IUL. I'll leverage the fact that I already have an IUL on myself so I can get half the amount there. Um, mm -hmm. And from there, um, hopefully- well, the same thing I do for all my kids and all my grandkids. And I've gone back and added additional as our income has gone up, as our business has done well, I, have, I need more places to put money. I, yeah. where, where else am I going to put my money? So as my money grows, my income grows, I've got to put it somewhere. I can put it in my bank account, earn 0.0% .0 interest on it. Well, that's, yep. that's not smart. I got to outpace inflation. I can put it into mutual funds where I take all the risk and no tax advantages. Um, I could take those mutual funds and put them inside of something like a 401k or an IRA and you know pick mutual funds inside of those wrappers. Yep. That's all it is. It's a bucket. There's a wrapper of rules around that bucket. So you either have the 401k rules or you have the IUL rules, right? Yep. So you're, it's just a bucket for money with rules wrapped around it. Yeah. Um, so I could put it in my 401k where I literally can lose it all, or IRAs or Kios or SEP yep. IRAs where I literally can lose it all. Or I can put it in a bucket that has high returns, no risk, no taxes on the growth, no tax on the distribution. I like that better. Uh, it, yeah. <laughs> so as my income has gone up, I, I had certain size buckets on myself and my, my kids and my wife. I've gone back and added additional buckets, if you will, to make to be give me more room to be able to add more money for the family's future. So generational wealth is being created, and no one child can go buy a, a jet, wreck the jet, and take away the family's fortune. Yep. They have their own earmarked money going forward. They're not going to wipe out the family's future. And Kevin, sorry, one quick question I have here on this five twenty nine thing, because I know you mentioned it's a it's tax in or. It's tax free, and then it's also tax free if you take it out and utilize it for those specific things. If not, right. subject to the four hundred one k and other traditional things. Right. Also, a five twenty nine though, um, it runs the risk of losing money if it's tied to the market, right? Version the IUL, correct. Right. Yes. Version IUL doesn't run correct. that risk. Okay. Correct. Okay, that's important. Um, wow. Okay. Well, hey, I mean, this is. This is giving me new energy. I'm still going to need to go take a nap right now. But um... <laughs> well, I mean, just one more thought on that losing money in the market. What if your child comes to you later on and they've done everything right? Yeah. They've, they've gotten the grades. They've done the, the charity work. They, they've, they've, they've followed all the rules and they apply. And all of a sudden they get the response letters back and they've been accepted at a prestigious university. Yep. And as parents we didn't do anything to save any money or we put the things we put money into an account that right before college age the market dropped and now we don't have the money to be able to send them 
Yep. They did everything they were supposed to do. We encouraged them to do it. They did everything right. And then we have to look them in the eye and say, sorry, yeah, you can't go. You qualified, you did everything right, and I can't send you. As a parent, that would just be crushing for most yeah. parents to, to know that if, it, if that's something they wanted their child to do and they were saving the money to do it, and then the rug got pulled out from underneath all of them the last minute when the market dropped. I mean, yeah. imagine all the families that thought they were going to retire in 2009, 2010, but in 2007 and eight, the market crash completely wiped out the retirement. What about all the kids that were going to go off to college that they're in that situation? Yeah. That money was no longer available for them to be able to yeah. do that. And the parents' 401ks were shattered as well at that point. So they, they, they didn't have the money in either type of account. To yeah. so, so protecting, it's one thing to grow your money. Let's get the high returns, but let's also protect it from the market risk. And let's make sure it grows tax-free and we can take it out tax-free. Wow. I mean, that's that's good. It, that story reminds me, I don't know if you ever watched The Office. Um, yes. But when uh, Michael Scott- My wife has actually done done the, the quote-alongs and the trivia, like going out to the trivia contests on it. My, my wife and my daughter could do quote-alongs for the entire thing. So, <laughs> so the, the part I remember from The Office is Michael Scott uh, promises this group of fourth graders- like Oh 10 years my gosh. <laughs> that he was going to pay for their college education. And then when it came to that, he didn't have the money to do it. And he felt absolutely terrible. Um, that, we should have that clip up right now. That should, you should have that meme yeah. up here on the screen. That's your 529 if the market crashes right before you. That, yes, exactly. Oh my gosh, that was a perfect reference. Holy cow. Oh God. Well, you know what? I'll have to track that down and I'll post it in another video. I put uh, 529 over Michael Scott's face. That's perfect. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> awesome. Well, Hey, Kevin, thank you so much for the time again today. Your, your level of expertise in education is, is, uh, powerful. So thank you very much for that. Um, and we know these videos will eventually get out the, to the people that really need to see it. So um, I look forward to bringing you back for more conversations like this. I feel like each day we uncover something new um, that if even if one person finds it helpful and it can help them and their family, then that's a winning day for us. Um, yeah. So and I highly recommend it. Remember, it's always compared to what? Just get guys, if you're watching this, get back with Van. He can get you some information where you can just compare side by side, just run numbers side by side and, and see a side by side comparison, which one would be better in your specific situation. Yeah. And then make your let make an informed decision. Right now, most people are not making an informed decision. Yeah. Make sure you have the side by side compared to what, so you can make that informed decision. Yeah. Appreciate you having me on, Dan. Awesome, Kevin. Thank you so much. Until next time. All right, take care. See ya.